welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information the troglies guitar show i've got a couple of guitars to show you guys tonight starting off with this uniquely modified gibson sonics from 1983. okay so the sonics doesn't normally look like this right normally it would have looked something like this but this was a very budget friendly bolt-on neck guitar model that had a les paul shape but wasn't technically considered a les paul i have a lot of episodes on these guys including one of the original original prototypes if you happen to have missed this video about a year ago. There were also a fewer higher end versions like the Artist that you can check out here, as well as many different headstock logos on them. But take a look at this one. This has to be one of the most interesting ones I've ever seen because they've taken this to the extreme. They routed it out for a Kaler, which is kind of cool, and then they swapped out the pickups for EMGs. Now, depending on which version this was, that's either a good thing or a bad thing. Because even within the base model, there were three different iterations, and some of those actually had the Dirty Fingers pickups. The ones with the velvet bricks, they're not as desirable. And it looks like this was a deluxe, which would have had the velvet bricks. So honestly, not having the original pickups is not a big deal on this one. So EMGs, I'm not sure if they're active or passive, but assuming they're active, that means they also had to have swapped out all the electronics. But you've got black and red bobbins on these things, and they match that up with the knobs too. I love that. So red top, black bottom. And then they went as far as swapping the tip on the Kaler to also be red. So this whole guitar just has that really nice chromed out look. They even did that for the pickup rings. And then you get the black body. And then the rest of this guitar just looks pretty natural. And you have the original style case. There's actually two different versions of this case. This is the worst version where they just have one neck rest. But then there is a better version that has a double neck rest. And I think then you also get a compartment inside the case. So how much do they want for this uniquely modified Sonics? Whoa, 1200 I, I think this place is dreaming on that price, unfortunately. I'm not personally a huge fan of the Sonics model. People ask seven to 800 to 900 all the time, but unless it's like a unique prototype or a very rare finish, I really don't suggest paying any more than 600 bucks, unless it's one of the versions that has the Dirty Fingers pickups, because those pickups are worth quite a bit on their own. I think if you really, really wanted that guitar, maybe 700 and that's pushing it. Next up here, we have quite the interesting Les Paul bass. Yeah, that's right. There were Les Paul basses in the 90s and I believe in the early 2000s as well. But what made this one stick out to me is it's green. And what makes it even better than just being green? It's in Ireland. <laughs> a perfect location for this base. So they say it was a special custom order and I have no way to verify that or not, but I think this is the first green one I've seen. Even doing a Google image search, I'm only able to pull up one other one. And this is one of the earlier versions that has a more Les Paul-like layout with your toggle switch up here. But this one does not have the ebony fretboard or the flame top. So going between this one and this one, yeah, I would say this is a million times more attractive, especially with that ebony fretboard. Although it's a shame it doesn't have the toggle switch up here just, you know, to make it look like a regular Les Paul. But we've got two Bartolini pickups in here. Looks like black speed knobs, the whole black and green vibe. That's my favorite colors right there. This one works for me. The only thing that would have made this better is if they would have went as far as putting like black binding on it. Now that would have been sweet. But then again, without the binding, you actually get the like faux maple binding on the sides and you can see the flame figuring. So, you know, I think I'll actually leave that alone. Maybe it's better they didn't put a black binding. But unfortunately, it does have a very small lacquer chip right here. You could probably touch that up with the right guy, though. Oh, and did I mention this is a five string bass version? Now, I do believe they made a few of these, so that's not necessarily part of the custom order status. But that ebony fretboard looks great. I love the 90s era ebony fretboards. Maybe it's just because they've had almost 30 years of playing in to feel good. But as far as the headstock here, it looks like Gibson Mother of Pearl logo, and it says Les Paul on the truss rod cover. As far as the rest of the condition, it doesn't look half bad. Just some light play wear. Although the back of the headstock looks a little bit strange at this angle due to all these reflections, it kind of looks like it has a volute, but it doesn't. And it's a bit hard to read the serial number, but you can tell it's there. But they call this one the LPB25 with premium plus top. And according to the page that they have on here, 34 inch scale length, with a 1.75 inch nut width. I guess the ebony fretboard's not necessarily special for this particular model, but you know, it's nice with that finish. But the green is not included in the available finishes. 
And it doesn't look like the dealer has any specific story. They're just saying it probably came from a dealer special order at the time or a custom order. Well, you could probably call the serial number into Gibson and they just might have the story on that. Their records are pretty good starting in the 90s. Anything before that, they're just doing research online. So if you ever have a question about your guitar, you can reach out to the Gibson help support line. And I've had decent success getting answers from the 90s up until today. Continuing on here, we have a Gibson Montana Gold SJ200. Now, ever since I got that Epiphone SJ200, I've been looking at these things more. This is the first time I've noticeably seen a Montana Gold, but what makes the Montana Gold different? Well, you get this pick guard. I mean, that's not why I'm sharing it, but check this out. Ebony fretboard with block mother of pearl inlays, kind of like a Les Paul custom. You get your mustachioed bridge with your mother of pearl inserts, but here's where things get interesting. Take a look at that back. I do believe that is Koa and it's highly figured and it looks great. And check that out, a three piece maple neck, two pieces maple with a center stripe of walnut. But my friends, the fun does not end on the top and back of this instrument. It's really the headstock that I was like, oh, nice. I'm a big fan of custom inlays on the face of the Gibson headstocks. In fact, that's the reason that I fell in love with the 70s and 80s models of Gibsons, because you had things like the 25 50th anniversary, the Les Paul Artist, the Artisan, among many other guitars that got, you know, some more special looking headstocks. So naturally it's like, oh, Montana Gold, it looks like we've got some wheat on the headstock. Not the coolest, but it's something I haven't seen before. And the way that the lacquer has aged over all golden, it matches perfectly with the name. And hey, don't forget about your Grover Imperial tuners making that look cool, including your vintage style truss rod cover. I always love those bold things, they look great. As far as the face of the guitar, I mean, you got that going for it. A nice spruce top, but the back truly steals the show on that one. And this one, let's see here, offered by Bruce's Gear Bazaar in Parker, Colorado. And he's asking $6,995 and $195 shipping. And apparently this one was made in 2006. SJ200s are naturally expensive guitars. I'm curious if that one's priced appropriately or not. Looks like here is something kind of similar. Oh, this one is from 2014. Whoa. <laughs> I like that. Super wide quilt. I like that. Especially because it has it on the sides too. This is also a Montana gold model, but this one has a rosewood fretboard, which is what you would normally expect. To the owner of this listing, you might want to re-upload your photos because, you know, as just a random Joe that would be wanting to buy this, I wouldn't buy it because these photos, it just seems like you stole them off the internet. But this guy is open to offers at $67.50. Oh, and I think that was the other guy. Is this the same guitar? No, that's a different one because this one has the rosewood fretboard. Maybe this would be a better one to look at. The ebony fretboards definitely look better with the block inlays in my opinion. This one has a fantastic flame back though, as well as the sides. But apparently this was a limited edition of only 40 instruments. That was probably just for the 2013 run though. So based on those sales figures that I can see this one having the Hawaiian Koa on the back. Honestly, I think I prefer the maple, but it's different. It's exotic. It's got the ebony fretboard. I would say it's priced fair based on what little I know about the model at this time. And now blending the lines between acoustic and electric, we've got this ES-125 from 1961, and it's leather bound. Sometimes this looks cheesy. I know it was a big thing back in the day, not so much today, but this one, it looks great. It says Cherokee on it. They still left some of the guitar showing here, probably because of the bridge and the tailpiece and whatnot but I like the way that they've just incorporated this. It really transformed the whole look of this instrument. Cause sometimes, you know, these can look a little bit plain, especially the versions that don't have a cutaway yet. Because normally we would have something like this. It's a nice classy vintage looking guitar, but this thing says, hey, I'm a cowboy. I own this show. You best be paying attention. And maybe it's just the, the little subtleties, like they actually carved out the F holes within there as well. So it just looks like it's part of the guitar's top. A single dog-eared P90 in the neck position. They even went as far as uh, putting a pick guard <laughs> over top of that. Maybe that's why I like this. Oh, sweet. And they even took it off. 
it looks like I didn't even have to look up that other one because here it is with it off. That actually looks pretty nice just on its own. It's got great color. And the reason why it still has great color is probably because it was all covered up. Yep, you can see it. You see right there? <laughs> That's funny. So this is the original color and it got covered up so the sun's UV rays wouldn't fade out the finish. But you can see right here in the exposed area where it is faded out. Man, these things look so great back in the day, didn't they? But unfortunately, the leather coat has definitely scratched it up a little bit here, but who knows, somebody could probably buff that up. Now that I've seen this luscious finish underneath here, it kind of looks cheesy switching back to this. Oh well, it's definitely a nice cool piece from the time. But if you want to add this to your collection, well, only two and a half thousand. Just a brief look at the price guide that says that's in the upper registers. You also gotta remember it's in Canada, so it'll be a little bit more expensive than if in the USA. And for one last one today, let's take a look at this. This thing showed up on Reverb today. It's located in France. They, they went roughly like $13.50 if you want to ship it in here. But this is one of the reissue 335Ss. I just recently showed you guys a vintage one. I've had the modern reissue. I mean, you could check out the video if you want to. But this is the other color. They did them up in silver burst as well as kind of like a vintage sunburst. But the original ones were never offered in silver burst like this. Now the professional version, yes, it had it, but it was the nice teardrop shape, not this weird rim burst making it look strange. But you don't see these things showing up on the used market too often, so I thought I would let you guys know about it. Looks like it still has most of the original paperwork as well as the original case. Honestly, that's not a bad price. But yeah, I would say one of these in clean shape, an easy 1100 to 15, maybe as much as 16 is fair game. And since it's made in the USA, you technically shouldn't have to pay any import duties or taxes, but you might have some brokerage fees to consider. Alright troglodytes, thank you for tuning in today, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.